Okay, so many moons ago, uh, my then boyfriend, now he's my husband, Doug, and I decided to go on a backpacking trip in the wilderness of Maine. I'd never been backpacking before, so I ran out and got a backpack and brand new boots, and off to Maine we went. Now, Doug has hiked the Appalachian Trail, so I felt like I was in good hands, and he had all the rest of the stuff we'd possibly need. So we drove for hours from Boston, went down a long dirt road, and came upon the ranger um, cabin, where you're supposed to check in before you go for hikes in that kind of area. There was nobody else around, no one, not a soul, not a car. But we got out of our car, walked up these old creaky steps, and through a rickety door into a darkly lit ranger station. And in the corner was this grisly old ranger doing his nails with a bowie knife, kind of creepy. And without even looking up, as if he saw people here all the time, he said, what can I do for you folks? And so Doug, who had planned our hike, said, well, we're going to go for a hike. And we're going to, this first night, we're going to go to a, a small waterfall and camp there. And the next day, we're going to go climbing up over a mountain. And we're going to camp in a little meadow there. And then the third day, we're going to come down by Skuwager Falls and back to our car. And the ranger looked up and he said, don't recommend going that away. <laughs> and he spit into a batoon, you know, it's batoon right by his feet. It was disgusting, but we're in Maine. So anyways, uh, he didn't really say why we shouldn't go, maybe because the trail wasn't often used or it wasn't well maintained. But Doug was determined. He'd made his plan. There were miles to be had. There was water in certain locations and how much food we had. So we signed in and off we went on this hike. And I'm kind of a city girl, so we had just gotten into the woods a little ways and uh, it just, it overwhelms you in the woods, does it not? In a good way, I mean, you know, the trees and the birds are singing and the sky was blue. It's just beautiful. And I'm following the man I love down a trail. It couldn't get any better. So about a mile or so in, uh, we stopped to relieve ourselves. It'd been, you know, a long trip. So Doug steps behind a tree and I, like all the girls have to do, I step off the trail, go behind a fallen tree and squat down, do my business, come back onto the trail where I meet Doug. And he's looking at me with this kind of funny smirk on his face. And I'm like, what? What's so, you never seen a girl pee in the woods before? He's all, yeah, but did you see that bear that walked right behind you? And I'm like, wait, first of all, you didn't tell me there was a bear behind me? And secondly, there's bears. So now I'm kind of terrified, but he's like, yeah, let's go. Got to go on because we got to get to our campsite. So we walk some more. And before you know, I kind of forgot about the bears and how he didn't tell me there was a bear behind me. And I can suddenly hear this bubbling brook. And there gets to be a bubbling stream. And then we come out into this opening, and there's a beautiful little waterfall. And this is where we set up camp for the night. Doug cooks us a lovely meal, and uh, we're sitting around a little fire. But we're tired, and it gets dark in the woods early. Did you know that? And so we pretty much just put out the campfire and went to bed. Our heads hit the pillow and we were out. Well, somewhere in the middle of the night, I turned over to try and get more comfortable on the ever more uncomfortable hard ground. And um, I tried to go back to sleep, but all of a sudden that little waterfall was like Niagara Falls, okay? It's so loud out in the woods. I mean, everything is so loud. And I'm a city girl, so sirens and trucks that back up going beep, 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 beep. But that I can handle, but this waterfall was just gushing and gushing. And, and then all of a sudden, despite all that noise, I could hear scurrying and then scampering and then little, you know, and then the little padded foot sounds. And, and I'm starting to get quite scared because all between me and that is this little thin nylon, right? <laughs> and I'm lying there like, OK, it's all good, I'm sure. But I'm getting more and more nervous as these sounds are sniffing and snortings are coming all around our little tent. And Doug, of course, meanwhile, is fast asleep next to me. And then there is this loud cackle. <laughs> and I'm like, what the sh <laughs> And I'm like, oh my god, the only person who knows where we are right now is that deranged ranger right back of there. And he's probably gonna bring his bowie knife and come in there and slash our throats. And I spent the rest of the night just trying not to envision this thing coming through my tent and killing us and being the end of the story, but apparently it's not the end of the story because here I am right now. So we did not get murdered in the sleep. We wake up the next morning quite early and somehow with daylight, I'm, I'm okay now. It's all good. Everything looks better in the daylight. So we go walking on down the trail and do this beautiful hike up over a mountain. And it was perfect. It was just a picture perfect day. The views went on for forever. And we came down the other side of the mountain and there's this pretty little grassy meadow area surrounded by shrubs. And 
This is where we were going to camp for that night. It was just picture perfect and so beautiful, and I was there with the man I love. And so we had a quick cup of tea, but we were exhausted from the hike, and we decided to take a, a nap in the tent. So we climb in the tent, we fall right asleep. About an hour later, I hear noises outside the tent again. But there's different sound. It's like kind of muffled and weird, and I'm not quite sure what it is, but I'm like, damn it, I can do this. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to lie here terrified all night or all afternoon. I'm going to see what this noise is. I can do this. I might be a sturdy girl, but I can do this. So I crawl to the end of the tent, and I open up the, the entrance to the tent, and I stick my head out, and this fog has come in. And this mist is surrounding us, and I can hear these muffled noises. Then all of a sudden, there's a figure coming out of the fog, coming towards our tent, and then another, and another. And it's Boy Scouts. They're coming to our little spot, and they're setting up their tents, and they're going to spend the night, our romantic night, in this little meadow with us. Boy Scouts! <sighs> Anyways, so listen, I've got a couple of things to share with you kids out there. I mean, you kids out there have never been for a backpack trip before, okay? A couple of things to remember on my, all my close encounters. Number one, if you go out hiking, you tell someone where you're going besides the crazy ranger, okay? You let someone know where you're going and when you're going to be back. That's close encounter number one to make sure you do that one thing. Number two, there are bears in the woods. I found that out. And make sure you put your food away in a safe place, right? Always put your food away and don't put it in the tent with you. Okay, that's my, my second rule. Close encounter number three. There are worse people to be stuck in the woods with than a tro troop full of Boy Scouts, right? I mean, seriously, that's a good bunch to be around just in case something goes wrong. They have those badges that they get, right, for injuries and things. Close encounter number three with the Boy Scouts, right? But number four, if you're going to go hiking, and you're gonna buy new boots to go hiking, make sure you break them in before you go hiking in them, okay? Because close encounter number four, my feet were covered with blisters and I bitched the entire way out. Thank you. 